Thank you for joining me today for an important discussion on one of America's most challenging issues, immigration reform. Almost everyone would agree that our nation's border security and legal immigration system are broken. Securing our borders and reforming immigration in a responsible and humane manner must be a top priority for Congress and the White House, as it is for the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and businesses large and small across our country. But in a narrowly divided Congress with split party control, it's going to take Democrats and Republicans working together. That can be difficult to find in Washington, but I'm joined today by two members of Congress who are showing courage, leadership, and bipartisanship on this critically important issue. I'm so honored to be joined by Congresswoman Maria Salazar, a Republican from Florida's 27th Congressional District, and Congresswoman Veronica Escobar, a Democrat from Texas's 16th Congressional District. Congresswoman Salazar uh, is a member of the Foreign Relations and Small Business Committees and was first elected to Congress in 2020 and re-elected in 2022. Congresswoman Escobar elected in 2018 and re-elected twice, serving her third uh, term here in Congress. She serves on the committees on armed services, judiciary, and ethics. Good morning, ladies. Thank you for joining me today. Good morning. It's great to have you. Well, first, let me start uh, this conversation by just asking each of you to share a bit of information about your district, about the constituents that you have an honor to represent, and what they are saying about this important issue, immigration reform. Uh, let's start with uh, Congresswoman Escobar. Well, Evan, thank you so much for uh, moderating us, and I'm so grateful uh, to everyone tuning in to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce for uh, engaging on this issue. It really is truly one of the most critical issues and one of the most challenging ones facing our country. I represent a beautiful, warm, loving community of goodwill, El Paso, Texas. We are right on the U.S.-Mexico border, and we have for decades been on the front lines of welcoming and providing hospitality for migrants who are seeking asylum and seeking a better life. Um, but my constituents for quite some time now have been asking why Congress isn't doing anything to address what is a very inhumane, unjust, and broken uh, uh, issue, which is uh, our outdated immigration laws. And so I'm, I'm very privileged to be in the position where I can try to bring forward solutions and I have been so fortunate to be able to work with my colleague, Representative Salazar. Thank you. Congresswoman, what a great tee up for you. Sounds like you've got a real partner. Tell us a little bit about your Florida district and uh, uh, some of the uh, issues you're tackling, but in particular, uh, what your constituents are telling you about immigration reform. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, it's, uh, I, I like her. She's a nice girl. <laughs> she's from Texas, you know, but uh, we're going to forgive that. But I really do like her. I think she's an honest broker. She's a good person. And uh, I love the fact that she is Mexican-American, so she understands the topic very well. Because we have millions and millions of Mexican-Americans in this country that we need to bring dignity to. So I represent Miami, which is the ultimate melting pot. Um, we have, I don't know. 23 different nationalities from Latin America and Central America. A lot of Central Americans. 78% um, of my constituents speak Spanish. I would say that 70% uh, of my campaign was in Spanish. I joke with Veronica that, you know, I forgot how to speak English because, but we love the American dream and we love the American exceptionality. Sometimes I tell some of my uh, colleagues in the Republican Party that we are more Americans than they are. You know why? Because we know the other side. We have a point of reference. We know what this country brings and what it is. And that's why we created the Dignity Act. That means that we want you, if you don't have uh, papers, if you are undocumented, that you could live a dignified life in the promised land. That does not mean that you have to go 
towards the path of citizenship. But while you are here, you will be living a, a, a good life and contributing to the economy of this country, being a good person, not committing a crime, contributing to the economy, raising your American children. So that's my dream. I have a dream for all those people, 15, 16, 10 million that I don't have paid for them to live like Veronica and I have been able to live because we were born in the American dream. I appreciate the passion. Uh, let me just, uh, and stick with you, uh, Congresswoman, for just a minute. Uh, uh, as, uh, as a former member of Congress, uh, and as you all both well know, you spend more of your time back at home in the district, uh, meeting with, working with, living with your constituents, not here in Washington. When you're at church, when you're at the grocery store, in this whole aspect of immigration reform and our broken system, what are your constituents kind of pinpointing for you? Congresswoman, here's what I would like you to work on most. It's a comprehensive, challenging issue, but what is it your constituents are pointing to as the areas that need attention most first? Congresswoman uh, uh, Salazar? Well, it's, uh, you know, our constituents are people with common sense, which is the least common of all senses. And what they tell you is that, hey, the border. There's no way that we can have millions, what, you know, the images, you know, I come from the world of television. Words are, uh, images are better than words. We need to put order at the border. That's number one. Number two, look what's happening in New York City, that even the mayor, who's a Democrat, is saying, hey, stop this because I can with this onslaught, with this flood of people. The fentanyl. I mean, how many people have died because of fentanyl? Look at the child sex traffickers. Didn't you see that movie called The Sound of Freedom? We are the number one economy for pedophiles. How embarrassing. We don't have that order, that technology at the border that will filter everything and everyone who's coming in. We agree on that. Everyone agrees on that. And that's what my constituents are telling me. So dignity is a landmark um, uh, legislation that will solve everything that I've told you and the economy. That's another thing. Let's suppose that we're not talking about the border. Hey, Maria, we need hands. Construction, hospitality, agricultural, industries that need hands. Those hands are here, but they're not legal. So, hey, common sense. <laughs> I think uh, Washington uh, has certainly common sense in you two ladies, uh, and we need more of it. Uh, Congresswoman Escobar, uh, as you uh, work Main Street in uh, El Paso and in the surrounding areas, what are your constituents telling you uh, in particular? And uh, Congresswoman Salazar brings it up, the economy. What are the small businesses on Main Street in your district saying, here's what we need help with most? Well, she's right. Everyone is asking for help with our workforce, uh, whether it is the our, our restaurants, our local restaurants. And actually, it's not just in El Paso. When I'm here in D.C., uh, we get visited by corporations, by associations. Every single business group has implored that we do something about getting enough about building up our workforce. But what I, what I really hear about a lot in El Paso, really a number of things, and it depends on who I'm talking to. From young people, I hear about the need to act on our dreamers. The fact that we have a number of dreamers in El Paso, pe young people who are living in limbo and who live with incredible stress and anxiety about their future and all of the limitations that they're that their status places on them and the incredible potential that they have for our country. I also hear about people with mixed family, uh, mixed status families, Americans who are married to someone who is undocumented, but who at one point, uh, you know, may have uh, come across the border without documents and now is barred for life, even when they are when they have an American spouse even when they have an American child, our, our laws are so restrictive that, you know, in the last 37 years since we've had comprehensive immigration reform, our laws have gotten more draconian and have, and we place these lifetime bars on people, on families. But I also hear a lot from uh, 
my community that is exhausted with the broken system. You know, we offer hospitality and we have offered hospitality to tens of thousands of migrants. And for the, the vast majority of El Paso's involvement in this, we've done it with volunteers and with donations. And it's only been recently that the federal government has stepped up to reimburse our community so that our local property taxpayers aren't shouldering that burden. But as Maria mentioned, it's no longer just border communities who are, are stepping up to, to try to offer this support, but it's communities in New York, in Illinois, in Colorado, and it's unsustainable. At the same time, I have many El Pasoans who tell me that we need to protect the asylum system. And the best way for us to address all of the things that I've mentioned, all of the things that I'm hearing from my constituents is the Dignity Act, the bill that Representative Salazar and I have come together on. Because not only will it address the undocumented population in the country, not only will it change the way we operate at the border, not only will it open up legal pathways so that we're not stressing out the border, but it's innovative in that it creates in-country processing facilities so that people don't even have to come to the border at all. The best way to manage a border is by recognizing that migration happens long before people get to the border and offering common sense solutions that way. Well, you both obviously articulated a real clear understanding of what your constituents uh, are facing, uh, what they are hoping to see done. Uh, and I appreciate your obviously both stepping forward. You made national news earlier this year. You both mentioned the Dignity Act. Let's dig into that for just a few minutes because you really are breaking the mold in working in a bipartisan fashion tackling a really tough issue. And as you say, it's been decades since we've been able to see anything meaningful in the terms of immigration reform. So first, uh, I'll start with you, uh, Congresswoman uh, Escobar. Uh, how did you and uh, the Congresswoman get together on this? How did you identify this as an issue that you wanted to partner together? Uh, you both mentioned some of the nuts and bolts of it. It's a 500 page comprehensive uh, piece uh, of legislation tackling, again, a tough issue. How did you start working together on this? And uh, what are some of the uh, key elements that you'd like to make mention of? I chased her around on the floor. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I need to talk to you. Come over here. <laughs> She's right. Um, our first. Well, uh, our, did, our did, she, uh, uh, did she play hard to get? Or. <laughs> Okay, hey, have you seen Veronica Escobar? Oh, there she is. Hey, Veronica, come on. We have to. Don't you think you want to work with me on this? She would say, yeah, Maria, yeah. She's like, she's very no, uh, delicate and well-mannered and highly, highly mannered, you know, and soft-spoken, uh, just like me. You know, and she would look at me and say, yeah, I think I want to work with her. But our first meeting was fantastic. She was looking at me and saying, this woman, what is this woman saying? <laughs> I think that she liked the essence, the content of the message. And ever uh, since I can say that I cannot, God provided the best partner in, for this project. There's no one else better than Veronica. Well, I, I'm waiting for the you had me at hello moment, but I maybe we won't go there. Uh, yeah, almost. I mean, the, Maria was uh, the, our first encounter on the House floor. I was a little taken aback because she was very assertive. And, um, and at that point, though, this was last Congress, House Democrats had the majority. And we were trying to get our own comprehensive immigration reform bill passed, uh, a, a bill filed by my colleague, Linda Sanchez, a bill that the president endorsed and gave to us, and a bill that I wholeheartedly believed in. Um, and you know, I, I needed to make sure that we gave space to that bill because it, it is in many ways the ideal for those of us who are Democrats. But near the end of the last Congress, when I saw that our bill, that, that uh, Representative Sanchez's bill did not get a committee hearing and did not get to the floor, and that there were even Democrats who um, you know, had concerns about certain provisions because they, they may be from more conservative districts uh, and wanted to see more on security and other issues, 
it, it really was a, a wake up call to me that the, the only way we're going to get this done, which is the only way it's gotten done historically, is in a bipartisan manner. And so I sat with Maria, my team and I sat with Maria in her office uh, at the end of last Congress to talk about working together. And uh, I was so inspired by Maria's commitment. I knew she would be the partner who would, through thick and thin, uh, stand together on this issue. Because Evan, you mentioned it at the, you know, in, in your opening comments, it takes a lot of courage to step away from your party on such a charged issue and to say, you know, I've, we've got to compromise. Uh, and it's, I can tell you, it has been tough. And I, I'm sure it's been tough for Maria as much as it's been for me, but we have to do this for the nation. That's correct. Uh, Congresswoman uh, Salazar. Um, yeah, I, I really, and I appreciate the humor and the candor because when people watch cable news at night or read the paper, they think, you know, do Republicans and Democrats even talk to one another? And so while it's a, a humorous visual, uh, but the reality is it does take courage and it takes leadership uh, because both of you probably have some peer pressure within your own uh, caucus conference uh, and your parties uh, to say well, what's going on here. So what has been your reaction, Congresswoman Salazar, from uh, the leadership, your colleagues, about working uh, uh, with uh, uh, your colleague in a bipartisan way on a really uh, challenging issue? Well, you know, as we have been talking, immigration is such a toxic and such a uh, hard, it's like a stone. And even though people in my party understand that we have to secure the border, that we have to stop uh, the asylum system being gained, that we have to increase and better the legal immigration system, my party understands. Rank and file of the Republican Party members that I talk to understand that we need to fix those. It's just that since it's been 37 years and there has been this, this lack of movement, no one really understands how to move forward. And that's what I'm telling them. Look, this bill, it's, uh, it's not perfect, but it does and it satisfies many of your needs and concerns and worries. So what is it that you don't like? And then they go, well, so that's the job that we're doing, at least on my part. We are willing to give some type of dignity to those who are here. They understand that even though they broke the law, they need, they, they are staying, they have stayed, they have jobs, they are needed. So why don't we give them dignity and then give them some citizenship possibilities later. But in the meantime, we solve the lack of people, the fact that we don't know who is in the country. We end the asylum system gaming and uh, we know who's coming in and we're giving asylum to those who merit it and those who do not, we don't give them. The fentanyl we can stop. We can improve the ports of entry with better technology, high, big, giant x-rays machines. You know, let's modernize this issue, guys. It's been 37 years. So they get it, but it's complicated. And unfortunately, to tackle such big issues, you need the time to explain and explain it again. But the reason why I'm in Congress, it's for this. This is, this is the reason why I am here. I came from 35 years of, journal, of journalism, and uh, this is the toughest job that I have done. But uh, with Veronica next to me and the help of God Almighty, I'm sure that something will happen because we're still in the best country on earth and we have the best system that, that takes into account what the boss, meaning the people, need. And you know that this is a front and center topic for the country, the border. Yeah, let's turn now to what our party leaders in both the Democratic uh, and Republican in Congress are saying about the possibility either of a comprehensive package or maybe important pieces of the Dignity Act uh, that you all have put forward to maybe hitch a ride on some of the must-pass pieces of legislation uh, that we expect to get across the House floor and hopefully through Congress later this year, like FAA reauthorization, NDAA, the Farm Bill. 
Are you getting a sense of any possible movement on aspects of immigra uh, immigration reform within your own party's leaderships, uh, giving this an opportunity this year? Uh, Congresswoman Escobar. Well, the, Evan, the Democratic Party leadership and specifically uh, leader Jeffries and um, our whip, uh, Catherine Clark, and our um, chair, uh, Pete Aguilar, you know, I've met with all of them, uh, walked them through the legislation. I, I did give Leader Jeffries a head, heads up that I was working on this. Um, and, you know, they've thankfully given me the space that I need in order to engage this way. And, and to some of my colleagues, you know, there's a, a lot of colleagues deeply invested in this issue on the House Democratic side who, who want to see bipartisan immigration reform and who may not like a certain provision, for example. What I have shared with them is that I have a great partner in Representative Salazar, and she and I both believe that this bill may not provide um, you know, the absolute best path. It's not perfect, but we're open to their input, and we're open to any amendments or changes that they think would, number one, still retain bipartisan support, and number two, improve the bill. So neither Rep Salazar nor I have said, it's it's this as is, take it or leave it. In fact, quite the opposite. You know, we want the involvement. We want people at the table. We want to make this a bill that in its entirety can get across the finish line because doing it piecemeal is dangerous. You know, it's, it's and, and frankly, it's been unsuccessful. So when you see uh, Republican uh, House Republican leadership today want to only focus on border security, as Representative Salazar has said, how are you going to do that in a Democratic Senate uh, without giving Democrats something that they want, which you know is, is in the bill? And so the bill provides a balance. And again, like for any group, any organization, any member that wants to see this succeed. We need you at the table. We need your help. We need your input. We are not unyielding, but we do recognize any changes have to be done in a balance so that we can build on bipartisan support. Comprehensive, piecemeal, uh, Congresswoman Salazar, uh, what, uh, what are you hearing from your party leadership and what are you thinking over the coming months? Well, uh, right now we have to fund the government. Uh, today, tomorrow, the next day, next week, and we have to finish with appropriations. I'm sure that once we take care of that, this is going to be the next topic. I've been talking to people. They know that border security is number one. And I say, yes, yeah, number one, and we can do border security and we can do the rest. Legal immigration, um, catch and release, or asylum system. We can do dignity. So it, it doesn't, one thing doesn't go against the other. But right now, as we speak, it's uh, funding the government. That's what we're concentrating on. Well, let me extend uh, a, an invitation to uh, share with uh, the business community, again, large and small, how we can help you all achieve your goals. We support your goals, we applaud your leadership. The U.S. Chamber is, over the course of this year, built the Liberty Campaign. It's a great acronym uh, uh, with a lot of meaning behind it. 450 plus organizations that have come together for not only border security, but we're forming our legal immigration uh, system because we do recognize there's uh, uh, multiple pieces of this really important pie and we all need to be pulling together. Uh, any suggestions for the business community? How can we help you all uh, yes. uh, uh, jump right in? Uh, Three things that you can do. You can call, you can call your congressman or your congresswoman, the, your senator. Very important for everyone who's listening to this uh, podcast or this uh, Zoom uh, meeting to call your representative in Congress and tell them, hey, we like the word dignity. That's, that's the best game in town at this hour call your representative. Number two, you can, from an individual point of view, the Liberty campaign members can endorse it. You can write a letter, you can say, yeah, we like the, this, this project, we like this act. And number three, write letters to the editor. 
to your local editor and say, we like the, the project, the uh, Dignity is the best game in town, is a landmark legislation to solve the immigration problem that hasn't been solved in 37 years. It touches legal, legal, and everything in between. That's what I need. We cannot do this alone. We need everyone that understands and knows that this is the number one problem this country is facing to join us so we can be all of us victorious. Congresswoman Escobar, that's a pretty clear uh, description. Anything to add an exclamation point behind or any other uh, suggestions? Because we want to help you. We want to help both of you. We want to get this across the finish line because it's so important to uh, America's business community. Yeah, uh, I agree completely with everything my colleague just said. And I think it's, it's really important to emphasize a couple of things. Uh, it, it will take immense pressure on con on Congress. I mean, it, it, it really will, because there is um, it, it is very hard to move the needle in Congress on any issue, especially a tough issue. But this is the best, most viable vehicle that we've had in a decade. It, it, it hands down. It is the best vehicle and it's the best vehicle because it is so comprehensive and it addresses the challenges we're facing today at the border and in communities all over the country. Um, and, and so because this is the best vehicle and because no other bipartisan comprehensive immigration reform bill has been introduced, then instead of some, you know, colleagues on either side of the aisle saying, you know, no, it's not acceptable, acceptable because of one, two, three, four, whatever reasons they have, if you get confronted by that, as you reach out to your member of Congress, then please tell your member of Congress, well, if you do believe in bipartisan immigration reform, then please work with these two women to, to fix whatever you think is not correct in the bill. So we, we can't abandon this effort. We, can, we need to grow the support. And if there are better ideas, we are open to them but we need people to come to the table and participate. And we need to get this across the finish line as quickly as possible. So we all need to act with urgency. Well, thank you so much. We are about out of time. Let me just wrap with a very sincere thank you with deep appreciation to both of you for taking time out of your uh, tight schedule uh, to share on this episode of Common Grounds, your vision, your work, your leadership, and yes, your courage to tackle one of our nation's most challenging issues, immigration reform. Ladies, thank you for your service. Thanks for joining me today. To you. And it's great having you on the U.S. Chamber's Common Grounds. Sure. Thank, thank you, you for helping us. Bye.